The IPG study has been on for six years and having tracked consumer decision making for so long, would you say there's a significant change in the buying decisions uh, from a decade ago to now? We've seen the changes on several fronts. We've seen the changes in terms of how people are valuing information around the world. People are increasingly, every year, valuing product information more and more. It provides them more and more confidence and satisfaction with the products, which is, which is wonderful. We're also seeing that people are getting a lot more joy out of learning about products. India is, I think, second highest in the world on, on that regard. That joy often translates to advocacy. These people are showing an increased interest in actually advocating for products. But what we're seeing as well is this, this interest and rush to take in information and enjoy information and value information is running into this increased interest and demand really for trusted information. We know in India, people here are very concerned about getting trusted information and India actually is the highest in the world when it comes to people relying on, on brand names that they trust in order to proceed further with the, with the product. So really dramatic changes around the world. How do you compare the habits and behavioral patterns of the Indian consumer with uh, the BRIC countries or other bigger economies like the US and the UK? There's a great culture in learning, in, in, in obviously, in this country, which is a, a wonderful accolade for, for India. And that culture and interest in learning manifests itself in a culture of wanting to share that learning with, with friends, which is wonderful for marketing and marketing communications people. And the other, I think, major point of distinction for Indian people is their, their willingness and desire and interest in finding brand names as great, represent, great representatives uh, and surrogates, if you will, for, for brand trust, um, which says to us as marketing people that we need to work very hard to establish strong brand name a reputation and strong brand name affinity and positive, and positive feelings. And would you say brand names are still relevant? Enormously so. And actually we saw this particularly in, in India, where in India uh, consumers here, more so than any other place in the world, are relying more and more on, on, on brand names and brand reputation. Um, why is that? Because as consumers are being challenged, uh, are challenging marketers for trusted information, they're relying on brands and brand name reputation to be a surrogate, if you will, a representative of, of, that, of that trust. We've seen categories like mobile phones, for instance, where consumers have embraced lesser known brands, let's say uh, like a Xiaomi, for instance. Whereas in some categories, they take time to embrace a lesser known brand. What do you think is the reason behind this? You know, with, you know, with brands like Xiaomi, a lot of it's price. You know, um, you know, they're a, they're a very strong marketer, and they've been able to come to the market with a very low low price point and bring in you know millions of new people, which is wonderful. Again, it's all about really democratizing information, and and I think you'll continue to see that, and it's a wonderful thing for us as marketers. Can you highlight specific insights that are dramatically more different, say, in a country like U.S.? It's it's interesting when you look at the data uh, for for India, Brazil, and China, they're very different. That, that cluster of countries is very different than the US and for uh, the UK. And one of the questions that we keep asking ourselves is, as this gap separates in terms of joy from learning, advocacy, interest in new product information, um, uh, greater value from product information, will this gap continue to increase or will over time as the Indian consumer and the Chinese and the Brazilian consumer as they become more accustomed to living in a commercial world and entering a middle class which these countries are are doing quite aggressively will they start to equalize with with the US is an alert customer the result of growing awareness levels caused by electronic media for instance in India somebody staying in tier 2 or tier 3 has the same level of awareness as somebody living in the big cities that really was the genesis of our research saying that you know with the explosion of the of the internet and and the availability of more and more product information often through electronic means people are just getting a lot more information in and our question was to what extent are they enjoying it and able to process it when we started the research back in back in 2009 our hypothesis was that all this information coming at people was just going to overwhelm them that they wouldn't know what to do with it and that they'd find it frustrating and confusing. Um, and what we learned very, very early on, early on, to our surprise, was that people actually have learned to cope quite well with all the information. And has television, according to you, been the great equalizer, or is it the mobile phone? We see a lot of cultures are actually jumping, almost jumping over the laptop and going right from, you know, television, radio, and print, you know, right, right to right to mobile. 
It obviously, with mobile phones, provides people immediate, ready, and easy, and relatively inexpensive access to lots of product information. I mean, I, I live off of mine. I'm sure you live off of you live off of yours. And how much do you think the Indian consumer gets influenced by word of mouth, social media pressure, and advertising? The Indian consumer responds very, very well to 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 social media and to and to word of mouth advertising around the world. You know, you know, face to face advertising, friends and family communication, is clearly the most powerful form of communication. That's why that's why you know, the marketing world enjoys or actually is, is thrilled that that consumers are willing to learn more and want to advocate more because that's a very powerful channel for us. So how do we tap into that? And social media is a very good can be a very good vehicle for us to to tap into that desire to, to advocate. Even as mobile phones get ubiquitous and social media becomes more and more influential, but it is still the mass media which is the most influential. So when do you see the mass media diminishing in value? Mass media will always will always have, have value. I remember gosh two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago people are saying this will lead to the internet will lead to the death of television the internet will lead to the death of radio advertising and print advertising clearly that's not the case when people are spending in the US upwards of five million dollars for a 30 second commercial in the Super Bowl TV is not dead and for many brands not all brands but for many brands TV fulfills a very very strong role in terms of creating a, you know a high quality image and, and an emotional connection that often you can't get through the internet well, this was great. Thank you so much for joining us and it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you.